It is the first of the month and time to pull the coffee cup prompt or the prompt from my coffee cup for the upcoming month. And we are going to be working on envelopes. Now, this happens to be a particular nemesis of mine. I have never been overly fond of working with an envelope, so here we go. This is what I prepared for week one, and I'll give you a deep look at how I did that. But first, give me a chance to tell you a little bit about my channel. I'm going to begin this month-long envelope journey by just pulling out a bunch of different sizes, different shapes. I believe I will choose this interdepartmental envelope that I brought home from my office stash when we went remote. I think I have the opportunity to turn that into a pretty decent little journal here. I'm going to start with choosing my color palette, which I have picked out a Payne's gray and a cool gray. So to deliver the paint onto this envelope, I'm just using a credit card or a hotel key card. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't want anything really defined. If there's ridges, I'm going to embrace those. I just want this to go on in a pretty pretty sloppy manner here, if you will, and, and just kind of cover up what uh, was on this interdepartmental envelope originally. So that's the first code. Let me see if I can get that on just a little bit better, or a little more coverage is what I should say. And there we go. We're getting, we're getting some coverage. So let's allow that to dry. And I'm going to take this um, drywall tape and just adhere it to the top of this interdepartmental envelope that has dried Payne's Gray paint randomly smeared on the top of it. So I have it on both sides, so you can kind of see if I fold it over, I've got that little spine area that's not covered. And this will fold over and create my closure. So I think that's going to work well. What I have planned for this drywall tape is not to keep it on here, but to utilize it to create some texture in the paint that I am putting on the envelope. So we'll see if this works. Back with the Payne's Gray paint on top of the drywall tape, and I will just spread that with my hotel key card. Now, this is gonna take a little bit more paint than it would take to, to do this with a paintbrush or to just put the paint on with the card, and I'm just checking to make sure it's doing what I want it to do, and it is. So I'll put that drywall tape back down and add some more paint on the top. So fortunately, this was a brand new tube of Payne's Gray, so I have plenty of paint, but as you can see, it took quite a bit to put down, so I would recommend using a craft paint or something that is not a heavy body golden where you're paying $17, $18 a tube, but something that's, you know, more economical. That's my thought process anyway. I'm not your mom. Do what you want to do. But um, that, that would be what, what I have chosen. So I've chosen an inexpensive paint. So now that I have that all down, I'm going to make sure that I am completely covered in all the areas where that drywall tape has been placed. And now that it is down, I'm going to pull it off. And I am 
happy with the results that I received with that. So you get those little teeny tiny, look at that, those little teeny tiny little checks, if you will, or little indentations, if you will. And now once that has dry, <clears throat> I have pulled in this stencil. And in, in theory, this is a great idea. I love the stencil. Um, it looks great when I put it on in black. However, here, here is where I went wrong with this, and I decided to leave it in and not edit it out. I haven't cleaned the stencil in, I don't know, forever. And it is so caked up with paint that when I delivered my paint onto my envelope, it was way too thick because it was so deep. It was such a deep stencil with all of the paint buildup on it. So lesson learned, I need to clean my stencils and I shall do that. But for this particular purpose, that's what happened. It did, however, create this wonderful print on my catch paper or on the newsprint that I laid down um, on my, my workbench. So I've decided to go ahead and add some charcoal to that and some additional stenciling to that. Then I'm going to pull this paper up because that's what I'm going to use for my end sheets. And we will cover the inside of this envelope journal with this catch paper that we began to clean that stencil with. That stencil still soaking, by the way. It had so much paint on it. I had to boil some water and soak it in, in uh, boiling water. And I've cleaned it, put it back in, etc. But that's, that's another whole story. So now that I've noticed the buildup of that paint and how much paint that delivered, and I didn't think that would have sticking power, I'm going to go ahead and just smear or just fan out that paint with my hotel key card and we'll have black little areas on the envelope but had I edited that's what you would have thought I had done <laughs> now you know the truth it was what Bob Ross calls a happy little accident so <clears throat> now I have the cold gray paint which I love it's one of my favorite colors. The blue-gray and the green-gray are two of my favorites in the Liquitex line. Unfortunately, I can't buy them locally. I have to order them off of Amazon. And I have the links for those in my Amazon storefront. If you would like to purchase those paints, I do make a little commission when you purchase off my Amazon storefront, but it does not change the price that you pay. Just full disclosure. You will find that on my website. I have a page dedicated to my Amazon storefront. So just go to twoolcrowsmixmedia.com and that's where you'll find my Amazon storefront or the link to it. So now I have that cool gray down. I'm adding some light gray and I'm just splotching it on with my key card. And just some mark making. And now it's time to let this dry. I went to get some paint movement on this flap. And since I have quite a bit of that light gray left over, I'm going to go ahead going to go ahead and spread that across that flap. I'm going to get rid of that little string because I'm going to use the Sari Silk closure. And now just another coat of gray. Now, what you didn't see is I did take some time 
and dry the rest of that envelope with my hair dryer. So while you didn't really see the drying time, I did, I did do that off camera. So now we're getting to a point where the front, I think, is looking pretty good. So I'm going to flip that over and think about what I want to do with this flap. And I have decided that, of course, it needs some darker color on there. And I believe I'll pull that darker color through that drywall tape just to give it the little checks. So I think that's going to look pretty good. But to strengthen it, I think I'm going to go ahead and glue the actual drywall tape to my closure. Now, whether this will work or not, we will find out soon. I have my glue and water mixture. And if you would like to know the ratios of that, I'll link that video right above. There is the drywall tape, and it does still have some stickiness on the back of it, but I did just put it over the top of that glue. So we'll let that now dry. And I am going to come in with my hair dryer and dry that. And now, once dry, I'm just going to trim around the edge. And that creates a pretty doggone good-looking flap, if I don't say so myself. I like that idea. So now that I have everything dry, everything ready to go, I'm going to add a layer of that glue and water just to give everything that protection. Um, allow that before it dries. A little bling with the glitter. I had that out for a previous project and I thought, ah, oh, you know what, this glitter might look good on here. And now, of course, this interdepartmental envelope has those little holes. Black cardstock, going to glue that on the inside of this envelope so it's not going to impede with anything I might want to tuck down inside there. And that gives me the coverage of where that hole is. So I have it glued all the way to the to the bottom of the envelope. I just didn't video me gluing in both. And now I'm going to take, going to take my catch paper or the newsprint that I always lay down on my work table and glue that down to the inside and make that my end sheet for this. Or make that, I guess it's not theoretically in sheets because I'm covering the whole inside. So we'll just call it the inside cover. And before I put the glue down, I'm sticking a deli paper down inside the envelope to avoid the glue seeping through my holes and gluing my envelope shut. There we go. It's nice and messy on that side which is pretty typical of me and any project I work on. Paint everywhere. We'll glue that down. Give it a good coat over the top.
trim it up. Just getting it positioned and putting the glue down as I, as I go here. And I'm putting the glue in water just to protect it because that newsprint is rather fine. So there we go. And now I have some black paint on a very small brush. I'm just removing any designation between that black cardstock that I glued inside and the cover flap. So I'm just making that look like it's a natural transition there. Just trim where I see that I may not have trimmed as well in the first round. And I'm really liking how that glitter looks on this. And I'm using the black paint just to cover any areas where that Manila color may be peeking out. And there we go. It's looking pretty good. So now let's create a signature to go inside the journal. So we're going to make this an, an actual journal. So I've pulled out some gel press prints that from my scrap pile that I have here. I have some music sheets, some waxed napkins, coffee filters, some coffee stained grid paper and coffee stained paper. I also have up there on the left, what you see in that bluish color is black bean stained paper. The yellow is onion stained paper. And if you want to catch a video on how I'm doing that, that is in process and you'll be able to see that soon. Just going to position these together. And let's see if they fit. No, they don't. I have one sheet that is way too wide, which was a piece out of a composition book. So I'm just going to change the center of that and then fold it over to meet the other size of the others. Because what I'm finding is an eight and a half inch by 11, or perhaps the A4 size will fit perfectly inside this interdepartmental envelope. And if you don't have an interdepartmental envelope, you could always use just a plain, big manila envelope that you buy with a little latch on it. Same, same principle, same, same purpose. This is just happened to be what I had in stock. So that's what I'm using. I'm going to use this uh, gel press as my in sheet, but because it's white on the other side and I've chose mostly coffee stain paper, I'm going to go ahead and glue that to my black bean stained paper, which happens to be that same kind of shade of blue. So there we go for signature number one. Now 
Let me just glue this little pocket down. And then when I go back to decorate this little journal, that's already done. So I decided to do two signatures, I believe, in this journal. Actually, I'm going to do three. I started to open up the journal and take a look at how many signatures I actually had in there, and I thought, well, why don't you just look on the spine, and you can tell by how many threads you have on the outside. Because I'm just using a very simple pamphlet stitch, and we'll stitch these all three of these signatures in with that pamphlet stitch. And that pamphlet stitch is, is very simple. You go from the inside of the center hole, three holes, from the inside of the center to the outside of your book or of your journal, back from the outside in on the top hole, all the way down to the bottom hole from the inside, and then back up through the center hole. And that completes that pamphlet stitch. You have the two ends of the thread in place to tie into a little knot right there in the center. Now, my coffee cup prompts are on Sundays. I am beginning journal making videos, which will be posted on Saturdays. So if you are interested in more journal making techniques, go ahead and hit that subscribe, subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. And you will be notified when I start getting those journal making videos up. As Many of you know, or those of you that are in my Facebook group where we're participating with this coffee cup prompt, I'm getting ready to stop the corporate rat race soon, so I'm going to have a lot more time to upload content onto my channel because I do truly love doing this. Your comments are so encouraging, and it's just fun to me. So I hope you will hit that uh, subscribe button and turn on that notification and join me as I continue to learn in this mixed media world. So there we go. We have the majority of the pamphlet finished or the little envelope journal fin finished. We've got three signatures in here. So there's plenty of space for decorating, plenty of space for writing. Um, you need a closure. So the next thing we're going to do is figure out how we're going to close this thing. And I have decided that I want to do that with just a piece of sari silk. So let me pull that out and grab a couple of washers to tie to the end of it and we will just wrap that sari right around the outside edge or right around the outside of the book and that way this book can get as thick as we want it to because there is no defining closure that is going to limit what we can put inside. So I'm just tying the washers with a right over left, left over right square knot. And I'm going to put two together for the other side and do the same thing.
and just wrap that and tie it off in a neat little bow. And that completes. If you want to join my Facebook group, there's a link right here for you to find out more about us over on Facebook. The group is Two Old Crows Mix Media, where there's a ton of creatives that are sharing their work when they do these coffee cup prompts. Do you. You don't have to do what I do. Do what you choose to do with envelopes for the upcoming four weeks and post your pictures over in that Facebook group. Here is some close-ups of the envelope journal I just finished. Once again, thank you for watching my content. I hope you found some value and hope you find enough value that you will join us in these coffee cup prompts where we choose one technique or one item and work for the entire month on that particular project. That video will launch every Sunday afternoon. And if it interests you, please come join us and hop on over to my Facebook group and post what you do. And feel free to post your videos if you video something. We would love to learn more about your channel as well. So I shall say bye for now.